Good Yeah Fusion, back with another video. Been a while, been busy, but I'm starting a whole new series called Why They Failed. Um, playoffs, the first, uh, the first round is finished. Second round is getting started to a great start. Uh, we're seeing great play from almost every single game. Um, it seems to be pretty, pretty close games for all of them. Of course, like there are some blowouts, but then like the next game of the series, that team blows them out and it, it just feels like a, nah, I ain't gonna say that. Anyway, anyway um, that's not what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about the teams that failed, the teams that had a chance, was fighting, and then ended up losing. And I wanna talk about why. First, we're gonna talk about, you already know who I'm talking about first, the Lakers, Los Angeles Lakers. They fought through the play-in to lose in the first round to the same team that has been beating us forever, the Denver fucking Nuggets. Now, there's a couple reasons, in my opinion, that this team lost. 90% um, of it is roster. 10%, I think, is effort, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and just go through this first. Um, series average, 108.6 points a game, 106.4. Rebounds, 46 to 40 to 41. Assists, 28, 27.6, 24.4 assists there. Six more rebounds, five more rebounds um, than the other team. How many of those are offensive rebounds? We'll never know. I could probably find it, but... Let's go ahead and look deeper into the stats here. Um, it's the rebounding numbers, man. That's a big, big thing. Let's move this shit out the way. Everything else is damn near even. Um, well, except for like the free throw. I, I guess that's sort of off. But big deficit with six, three for the assist. Uh, very close here. Lakers have a better field goal percentage. Denver has a better three-point percentage, but not by much. Free throw, that's the difference as well, but... Yeah, not bad, not bad. Series stats. This goes more into the roster, so let's go ahead and just talk about it. Let's go ahead and get to the roster. Let's just like compare these rosters just real quick. Uh, we got the Denver roster, uh, three-time MVP, Jokic, uh, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, one of the most important pickups by this team. Um, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, he's been playing well. DeAndre Jordan, a slept-on pickup, and I'll tell you why. Um, Christian Braun, Peyton Watson, uh, we got... Reggie Jackson and Justin Holiday. Um, besides the like the starters, there's not a lot of scoring from the rest of their team. That being said, them taking a uh, DeAndre Jordan off of the map uh, for other teams, I think was a good was a good uh, plan. He's a great defending big. Well, good defending big. He's sort of washed now. Um, solid rebounder. Shot blocker. Was a lob threat. I don't know about now, but he'll still probably catch a lot here and there. Perfect for Jokic. But, size advantage. A lot of teams would use a DeAndre Jordan to... Uh, to be thrown at Jokic. 
I think that he sort of reminds me, um, I think that he sort of plays like a, uh, what's his name? Andre Drummond, Clint Capella. There's a lot of players like that who are currently needed. Rudy Gobert, um, just defending bigs. I think that is something that is highly needed in the NBA right now because there's a lot of great scoring bigs. Jokic. Uh, Joel B, uh, Cat, Wimby. He's seven four guard, but he's still a big. Um, Michael Porter Jr. He's a six ten guard, but he's six ten. So you need a big or somebody who is around that height that can move their feet and and uh, uh, like defend well to really be useful on that team. So. That's just something there. That's and that's something that has been the same for this team for the past three years, maybe two or three years, where they have like their weakness. Well, their strength is is their size at the guard position, at the power forward position, at the center spot. They have size there. I think then everybody on their team except for. A contagious Caldwell Pope and Reggie Jackson are 6'5 plus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think that having a contagious Caldwell Pope to hit those threes, um, Aaron Gordon's back cuts, his um, running the baseline f- for the easy lob catches, Jokic with his great court vision. Uh, Jamal Murray finding a way to um, create for himself late in the shot clock or late in the game clock in general. They win games off of that. This roster isn't built uh, to handle that. We have no consistent scoring. Um, The only consistent scorer on the team were these two. He wasn't aggressive enough, Roy Hachimura. And I'm talking about the playoffs. I'm talking about regular season. Ain't no way he should be averaging eight points in the playoffs. Ain't no fucking way. He should be at this. He should be at 16, 17 points a game. A D'Angelo Russell, he played well. And then there were times where he just disappeared. Spencer Dinwiddie, we picked him up during the trade, uh, during the trade deadline. That's who we decided to pick up, a guard who has no scoring ability, not really that athletic. What is he here for? There's another body, Gabe Vincent. He was injured damn near like the whole season. It took him maybe four or five games to hit one three. What do we get him for? Jackson Hayes. He got zero minutes. Another lob threat. A solid rebounder. Give him some minutes. He might do something, but he's an offensive liability. This is who we had playing. This was our team. This is who we were going to say was going to win a championship. I remember this. Y'all may not remember that, but Fusion definitely remembers that shit. It was ridiculous. Let's go ahead and look at the full roster. Who the fuck are these guys? Injured, injured, injured. Injured, invisible, fall away jump shot. Austin Reeves, he played well. Do we keep him? I don't know. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? They still haven't gained my man Max Christie any minutes, even though when they do give him playing time, he's effective. This is what's probably going to happen. We're going to get rid of Max Christie. He's going to go to a, a different team and play well. That's what happens. 
until we get um, a reliable starting five, because we don't have even that, we're not going to be a successful team. We don't have a reliable. He's not reliable. He's not reliable. He's too scared. He's definitely not reliable. It's like... We have technically only two players on our team who can give us consistent numbers. Everybody else, you never know what you're going to get. Never know what you're going to get. He's supposed to be a high... In um, a great like defending, rebounding, energy guy. He's supposed to be a rebounding, defending, energy guy. Energy guy defender. Energy guy uh, like defender who can shoot. Energy defender who can rebound. That's basically what this team is. A bunch of energy guys who are just here to help fill out the roster let's just all right minus lebron ad minus like the starters these five starters lebron ad a d'angelo Austin Reeves and Rui minus those guys. We have zero offensive anything. Who do we trust with the offense? If they're not in this nigga, no, I'd rather have air bud than this dude. He's useless. He don't get no fucking minute. He's supposed to be our bench score. This dude, do you see how long his fucking chin is? Bro, it's like a tiki mask. Like, the fuck? Bro, it was like Jimmy Butler, but with no moves. Like, that's who we are, like, relying on. That's who was our starting two guard. And you're telling me that this was a winning roster? You gotta be fucking with me, bro. Look at these niggas, bro. Even when he had minutes and... Wasn't injured. He was an offensive big man. Who's averaging six? This is ridiculous. Uh, ain't no way that anyone thought that this team was going to win games. Ain't no way that anyone thought this team was going to be a threat in the playoffs. But because LeBron brings out a lot of, like, delusional fans, a lot of the delusional fans saw this roster and was like, this is a great winning roster and then you watch them play game one and then you realize hold on this team is ass and then we went to win the cup and then we're like hold on this team might be good because we won that cup we don't make any trades or any changes um just not a good team just not a good team not a good team anywhere lazy on the defensive end Let's go ahead and look at the uh, more of this stuff. Sorry, guys. Um, I just want to go through, like, these past game scores. This one, we just got whooped. We had the lead up by 20, came back. We gave up, hit the game-winning shot. Here, I think he hit the game-winning shot again. No, he hit the game-winning shot here. Anyway, it don't matter. I said this multiple times this year. If we can't get 108 points, we cannot hang with many teams in the playoffs. Relatively low scoring. Every single game that we lost, we were under the under 108. Every single one. 103, 99, 105, 106. Even they hit the 108 on the loss. If we would have had our usual 106, 107, we would have lost. If we wouldn't have scored 108, that would have been a loss. We have 119. Great shooting night, whatever. 
this is a consistent thing with this Lakers team. Not enough, first of all, not enough shots going up. That in turn means not enough scoring. Because we don't have that shot creator. We don't have that defending big to uh, stop the other team from shooting the ball more. That's what's up with this team, bro. That is what's up with this team. How to fix it. It's not hard. But we need a whole new roster. We need a score. Uh, Terry Rozier. We could have got him. But we didn't. Why is that? Andre Drummond. We could have got him. I think... Like maybe two or three games after the trade deadline, he, he put up like a 19 and 22 rebound uh, game. We could use that. What was our roster? What was the roster that we were using when we won the bubble ring? That was when we had like three bigs. People say that the big man is dead. Maybe the offensive big man. But the rebounding and the defensive big, that is up right now. That is what a lot of teams are looking for and needing. That's up. Um, but that's all I got for you guys. A lot of changes will need to be made. Uh, we need a true point guard. Um, we don't need Bronny. I do like Bronny. I do think that he'll be a solid 3 and D guy. I think his... Ceiling is a Drew Holiday type player, um, a like defending guard who can hit the three, but is mostly out there to play great defense and uh, make good decisions. But we don't need him. Clay Thompson, um, he's a name I've been hearing that has been been thrown around. Um, I think Clay Thompson got one more year. And I think he needs to understand that he shouldn't be taking more than 10 shots a game. I think he needs to realize he is a 14 to 15 point scorer now. And he needs to recognize that's just, that's just how he has to play now. That's just his game. But that would be the only way that he could be picked up and useful on this Lakers team is when he realizes what his worth is. And what his role will be. Um, hopefully we don't give him no money though. But. Yep. Yeah, that's all I got. Um, I will be uploading. Two more times this week. I do want to do a Clippers video. And a Suns video. So make sure that you guys are like. Uh, are subscribed for that. Um, but yeah. I'll see you guys next video. Peace.